Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we shall talk about one of the most important compiler optimizations, that's register location. This is the problem of finding locations for the variables in a program. Either these variables are located in registers, or they are located in, in memory. Memory is plenty, but slow. Registers, in turn, are only a handful. However, they provide very fast access. In the words of Hennessy Patterson, that's one of the most important compiler optimizations. Register location involves many problems, in particular, the problem of finding which variables will be placed in memory. Additionally, depending on how we allocate variables to registers, we can eliminate copies and increase the amount of instruction level parallelism in the program. The problem of determining which variables will be allocated in registers is called the register assignment problem. Variables that are mapped to memory are called spills, and if we can assign the same two variables involved in a copy instruction to a common register, then we can eliminate that copy. This copy elimination procedure is called register coalescing. Depending on constraints of the application binary interface, the ABI, some variables must be pre-allocated in particular registers. For instance, several architectures use registers to pass arguments to functions. These registers appear like pre-allocated registers in the program, as in this example on the left, in which the variables a, b, and c are read from the registers R3, R2, and R1. The main constraint that defines the register location problem is due to the observation that says that variables that are simultaneously alive must be in different registers. If that does not happen, then assignments to a variable might update another variable. For instance, here is a representation of live ranges for the previous program. Would you like to try to guess how many variables we will need to allocate this program? Perhaps you can pick up a piece of paper and try to do manual register assignment. Notice that we have four variables simultaneously alive. That's the minimum number of registers that we need to allocate this program. But do you think that we might need more? We call max life the maximum number of variables alive at any program point. We call min reg the minimum number of registers that we need to allocate the program. And there are programs in which max life is strictly less than min reg. On the right, you can see an example. Would you like to stop the video and try to figure out what would be max life for this program? What about the minimum number of registers? How many registers do you need to compile this program? In other words, can you calculate what's mean reg for this program? The maximum number of registers alive at any program point in this example is 2. You can see the live ranges of the variables in the figure on the right. However, when we do register allocation for this program, we cannot solve the register assignment part of it with only two registers. We need three. I left a few questions in this figure that will help you see what, uh, why this is true. Perhaps you can stop the video and think about these questions. The thing is that as soon as we assign a register to variable A, that forces to assign registers in a way that we end up having E, variable E, in a different register than variable A. Then we have variable D that interferes with both A and E. Then we will need a third register for variable D. And unfortunately, it's not possible to know easily how many registers we will need for programs in general. In other words, the problem of finding main reg is NP-complete.
that has been demonstrated in 1981 by Gregory Chaitin. He was working at IBM at the time. Chaitin has showed that register allocation is equivalent to graph coloring. What he did was to show an equivalence between graphs and programs. Given a graph, Chaitin builds a program such that its main reg is exactly n plus 1 registers, where n is the chromatic number of the graph. For instance, given C4, the cycle with four nodes, we have this program. I think that's a good time to stop the video. See if you can figure out why we have such and such variables in the program. For each edge in the graph, there will be a bas basic block with two assignments plus an addition. The addition is just to prevent the compiler from easily optimizing the program. From the program we derive its interference graph. The interference graph contains one vertex for each variable. There is an edge between two vertices if their corresponding variables have overlapping live ranges. So this is the interference graph of our example. It's almost like C4, except that there is this node X linked to every other node. So if we can color this graph with n plus 1 colors, then we can color C4 with n colors. Notice that X is just an artifact to prevent the compiler from transforming this program in a no-op. I mean, this program would be rather easy to optimize. Here's an example of coloring using four colors. But coloring is not optimal. I mean four colors plus the color of X, naturally. We can color this program with only three colors plus X, the color for X, using coloring as a metaphor to the register allocation. This discussion on computational complexity concludes our first class about register allocation. In the next class, we will show, shall start talking about algorithms to solve register allocation. We will see first a classic algorithm called linear scan. See you then.